In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Cross Townsend Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about the pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Cross Townsend in Lustrous Chrome. Now Cross is an old American brand, and it's one that doesn't get a lot of love in the fountain pen community. And I think there's maybe a reason for that. People think that Cross is a brand that's more focused on making gift pens than making really great pens. And maybe to an extent I can agree with that, but that doesn't mean that they don't make really nice pens. And I think the Cross Townsend, and they have a newer pen called the Peerless, those are both really excellent fountain pens. Now the Cross Townsend in particular is an interesting pen because it's a pen that's been used by several American presidents. Barack Obama used a custom Cross Townsend for his inauguration, and I'm not sure he may have used it for some executive orders. I know George W. and George H. Bush both used Cross Townsend, and Bill Clinton also used one. So there's, it's very cool that you can have a pen that you know an American president used. It's sort of the equivalent of a Parker dual fold that you often see a British prime minister using. So with that out of the way, let's do a walk through the pen. This pen has a chrome metal body, and it has these little lines through it. It's not galoche, but it's sort of similar to that. It's maybe not as deep. It's not machined in the same way. It's especially nice looking and elegant, I think, in this chrome finish. Now, at the top we have a little black, I don't know if it's filled, I think it's just plastic at the, the finial. We have a black ring here which we also have in the, the middle of these two kind of chrome looking rings, and then also a black plastic ring down here. Now, at the top of the cap, you can see Cross and USA. Unfortunately, these pens are no longer made in the USA. I believe they're made in China. So if you buy a new one, you're not gonna see USA on there. Also, on the clip here, we have Cross and Script. On the new ones, they've changed this to no longer be cursive, it just says Cross. But other than that, I can't really tell any difference between these pens. Now I haven't held the one that I believe to be made in China, but I, it looks exactly the same as this pen. So it has a snap cap and it posts onto the back. That's what this ring here is helping with. So you can post it very easily, very securely. You have a plastic grip section, nice sized, and then it kind of flutes out at, in with a metal ring here. And then we have the cross stainless steel nib and they say that this is a hand-finished nib, and the nib on the current production pen appears to be exactly the same as this nib. Now, it's a cartridge converter system, and unfortunately, it is proprietary. You will have to buy a cross converter. You can see it kind of has this long, tapered part at the end. Now, this probably isn't the best example, but this is a Waterman Edson converter, and this is a standard international converter. You can just see the, the part that connects with the pen is much shorter than on the cross one. So you are stuck with the proprietary cartridge converter system. Now, I personally have not used a lot of cross inks. I believe they're made by Pelican, but that may have been changed by now. But anyway, with the converter, you'll be able to fill the pen with whatever ink you want. And the other thing that I should mention is I'm not sure if the pen still comes with the converter as standard. You may need to buy that separately. Now let's do some measurements. Start with the length here. So capped, this is roughly 150 millimeters. So quite a long pen. This is about 131 millimeters uncapped posted about 157 millimeters. So 
quite a long pen, just as a comparison. So here we have the Townsend with a couple of other pens. The Townsend is the longest pen here. It's longer than the Mont Blanc 149. It's longer than the Pilot Vanishing Point, longer than the Sailor King of Pen Professional Gear, and the Parker Centennial Duo Fold. So this is a long pen, and it's also the skinniest pen here. It is definitely on the slim side. So let's do some measurements for the width. In terms of the the barrel, at about the, the widest point, we're only looking at 10.8 millimeters, roughly. Now, at the widest point of the grip section, still at 10.8, and then at the narrowest point of the grip section, we're down to 8.6. So that's definitely on the thin side. I personally do not write with this pen capped for very long. This is one of the more top-heavy pens that I have. Now, in terms of weight, we're at 41.33 grams. It's definitely a heavy pen, and then 23.89 grams uncapped. So this cap has quite a lot of weight to it, and when posted, it becomes, for me, pretty uncomfortable pretty quickly, because you have a thin grip section, and then you have quite a lot of weight way at the end here. It's just, uh, quick notes is fine, but you're not going to write a long time with this pen capped. It's just too top-heavy. Okay, so that is the size and weight. So let's do the writing sample. This is the cross Townsend. This is a fine nib, and this is Waterman Tense Black. Some fast writing. Yeah, overall, this is a very reliable pen for me. I don't really run into any issues of skipping. It's a pretty true fine, I think. Let's see here. Is there... You can get a tiny bit of line variation out of this, but I wouldn't really push it too much. In terms of line width, I would say we're probably point. Point six, point seven millimeters wide. So it's a, a pretty true fine. Now, in terms of reverse writing, it's pretty fine. It can kind of do it. It's actually not particularly scratchy. It's pretty smooth. So if you want a super, super fine line, I think you can get away with this. It's not, the ink flow obviously isn't perfect, but mm, it's workable. So that is the writing sample. I think that the nib is a very nice writer. It's not toothy. It's quite smooth. It's very nice to write with, and it's it's, this has been a reliable pen for me. I think I've had this pen for almost 10 years, maybe longer than that. So what are my pros and cons for the Cross Townsend fountain pen? I think my number one pro here is that this is a very good looking, very elegant pen. They say it has a 1930s Art Deco design, and I do think that is right. I love these lines in the chrome. It's just, it's a very elegant, kind of dignified looking pen. I also like that this is a pen, not specifically the Luminous Chrome one, but the Cross Townsend in general, is a pen that American presidents have used. Now, they don't use the fountain pen. I think they probably use a rollerball or a sign pen or a ballpoint. 
but it's cool that this is a pen that American presidents have used. Now, I also think the nib performance is really good, and I like, I do like that even though it's a metal pen, you get a plastic grip section. Plastic grip section on a metal pen is always a plus for me. I also like that this is a snap cap and it snaps onto the back as well as caps the pen with a snap. It just makes it easier to use. Now, in terms of cons, this pen is um, a pretty long pen and it's definitely quite top heavy when posted. So I wouldn't use this posted to write for very long. I also think that it is on the skinnier side, so that is a con. In terms of price, it's about $160 retail, which is definitely on the expensive side for a steel nib fountain pen. And then the other bummer, I think, is that Cross is no longer making these pens in the United States. I believe they've moved the production to China. So I, you know, the difference between this American-made one and the Chinese one, I'm not 100% sure. They look very similar. The engraving on the clip is a little bit different, and up here, engraving is a little bit different, but it appears to be the same pen. And then I think the final con here is that because it's chrome, it is susceptible to fingerprints. I don't think it's terrible, but you'll notice them if you look for it. Okay, so that is the Cross Townsend. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen, paper, and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.